let's start. So, um, welcome to all of you to our uh, second webinar for the recruitment of uh, new international students um, for our faculty. Um, I'm very glad to uh, see you here. So this after this evening, afternoon or morning, depending on the country where you are just staying for the for the moment, we have a nice program um, together with my team. Uh, we would like to inform you about um, a lot of things um, about uh, the programs that we offer at the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering of Ghent University. But also uh, we will give you some information about the country um, where we reside, uh, Belgium, the beautiful city of Ghent. Um, there will be uh, a lot of opportunities to ask your questions to us because that's the reason that we, we are organizing this webinar, um, because we suppose that you have a lot of questions regarding your application and our offer for programs. During the presentations, um, I would kindly like to ask to ask your questions in the Q&A. You find that uh, button um, upright your screen um, with a question mark. There you can type your question during the presentations. After all presentations, you will have plenty of time to ask your questions during the Q&A session. So um, welcome to my team. Also welcome to our guest speakers, alumni, and welcome to you. And now I give the floor to um, Hilde, I suppose, and she's the first one to introduce you to um, our country. Hilde, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Wim. So uh, my name is Hilde, Hilde van der Kastelen. I'm also one of the uh, team members of the International Training Center. And I will uh, share a few slides with you about uh, Belgium or little country Belgium and the city of Ghent. So here you already can see a, a nice picture of the city of Ghent. You can already see very old buildings. It's a medieval city. So you will also notice when you walk around in the city center of Ghent that you uh, are in an old uh, city. So Belgium itself, I said it's a very small country. Uh, I don't know if you know the map of Europe a little bit, but it's situated in the middle of Europe. It's the heart of Europe. It's the capital of Europe as well. So a uh, small country uh, on a small surface, we have 11 and a half million inhabitants. So we live quite close to each other, we must say. Even that is not a lot. Maybe you come from a city where you have some millions of people. So we only have 11 million, 11 and a half million of people in the whole uh, country of Belgium. Sorry so to Brussels, interrupt, uh, Hilde, but we can't see your presentation. Um, did you try to share it once more? I will try again. Yeah. OK, do you see it now? Yes, we, we can see your uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, now we see the presentation. Yeah, can. So uh, I just go back. I was talking about the city and this very nice uh, old medieval building. So I still want to share that with you so that you have an impression of the uh, city, how it looks like. So um, small country, 11 and a half, 11 and a half million people uh, living in Belgium. Brussels, the capital of Belgium and Europe. So where you also find the um, European Commission, European Council and uh, offices of the NATO. That is all located in Brussels. So I said a very small country, but a quite complicated country, I must admit. So you can already see different colors on the map of Belgium. So in Belgium, we speak different languages. So Ghent is situated in the uh, northern part where you can see Dutch speaking. So, but we have also part where they speak French, so the part in red, and also a very small part where they speak German. But don't worry about the uh, Dutch language we speak because all people in uh, Ghent and also in the uh, surrounding areas, we all speak uh, English and you can communi communicate easily in English, not only at university, but also when you go to a shop or when you want to uh, talk to someone you just meet uh, on the street, so no worries about that. 
Here you can also see the map of Europe, so you can see that we are quite centrally located. And you can also see some different cities not so far away from uh, Belgium. So a lot of students take the opportunity when they study uh, in Belgium to travel to other countries. And like, for example, if you want to go to Paris, you see that's less than 300 kilometers, two hours by train. So that is very easy to do uh, during a weekend or even as a, as a day trip if you get up early in the morning. So take the opportunity to visit some of the other countries as well. So in Belgium, we also have some uh, well-known products. Uh, Belgian beers are quite famous. We have some hundreds of different types of beer. So to also take the opportunity to try at least a few of them when you are in studying in uh, Belgium. Besides that, Belgian chocolate is also known by you, I suppose. And the last product, you see the picture there, also known by a lot of people abroad, are our uh, football team, so the Red Devils. Maybe you recognize uh, some of the uh, men that you can see on the picture there. Okay, so this is the uh, first, uh, oh no, sorry, so more slides. So Ghent, uh, the city of Ghent itself, uh, it's a rather small city. We have 250,000 inhabitants, so not a very, very big city, but uh, a lively, uh, in, a nice city to live, I must say. And you can also see 75,000 students in the city. So that's one, almost one out of three of the people are the students. So they have a big impact on the life uh, in the city itself. A good impact, I must say. So when the students are back in town after the holidays, we notice the difference and we are always happy when they are back. So Ghent also, uh, sustainability is uh, important for uh, the city of Ghent. Uh, a big part of the city centre is only for uh, pedestrians and also transportation is done a lot by bike. So most of the students and also staff, professors at university, they come to the university by bike. And you can also see uh, the bicycle path in front of the campus. Per year we have two million bikers that pass there. So you can imagine that this is uh, a lot every day. Uh, we see a lot of bikes passing there. And uh, in the city you also have, uh, we have some rivers, canals, so this is also important uh, in the city. So we also see a lot of uh, kayaks, uh, water taxis, so this is also something you can explore when you're living in the city of Ghent. And to conclude, you have some uh, pictures here. So Ghent is really a, a nice city to live in. There are a lot of activities. There are festivals, concerts, uh, theater, and so on. So here you have some nice pictures to have an idea uh, of it, but you have to experience it yourself to feel how it is to live in Ghent. Okay, so now I will give the floor to my colleague uh, Jare, and Jare, he will give some more information about the master programs. Okay, can you guys hear me? Sorry, I wasn't sure whether I was muted or not. Um, can everyone see the presentation? All right, perfect. Um, thank you, Hilde. So uh, my name is Jare, and I'm also part of the International uh, Training Center, uh, and I'm mostly um, known for being one of the um, people involved in the rural development program uh there's oops uh, i started with the wrong slide my apology so i will be talking today a bit about the programs that uh we offer here at ghent uh and that are organized in belgium alone so we have programs that are organized in combination with other universities outside of Belgium, but I will be talking about the ones that we organize here in Belgium. So the first program uh, that we can talk about is nutrition and rural development. So this is a program that has existed quite a while in our um, 
in our university. And it really trains you to develop um, programs that can improve nutrition of populations. As you guys all know, obesity, hunger, malnutrition, all of these things are an issue in the world. So this program looks at, okay, how can we address these issues, specifically in rural areas? So using better food nutrition, uh, food security and nutrition as a starting point, this program trains you to contribute to sustainable development at household, national and international levels. Uh, at Ghent University, we have two majors for this program, public health nutrition, and then also nutrition security and management. So this is the first program here in Ghent. The second one is the Master in Sustainable Land Management. So this master aims at integrating technologies to manage uh, resources in land, water resources, and other environmental resources. Um, and all of this in order to meet human needs and safeguard future livelihoods and ecosystems. After all, population pressures and severe degradation, pollution and desertification are problems that basically um, uh, are affecting all of our ecosystems and resources worldwide. This program also has two majors. One is land and groundwater management, and the other one is urban land management. So looking at how you manage uh, these resources in cities. The third masters we offer is the Master in Environmental Science and Technology. Uh, this is a really broad program that tries to offer multidisciplinary and solutions oriented uh, approaches to most of the environmental issues that we face. So you will learn how to create a healthier living environment for, for everyone by preventing pollution, but also by remediating it. This program has five specializations in the second year. So whether you are interested in how to do chemical assessment or resource recovery, but all, we also look at urban uh, pollution as well as environmental health technology for developing countries and also a specific specialization for marine systems. So these three programs are offered at Ghent University alone. The next program, Food Technology, is organized by Ghent University, but in collaboration with the uh, KU Leuven uh, University. Uh, so food technology focuses on uh, food science, but also food processing technology. So it's really looking more at food from a um, engineering standpoint and also how to produce food or, or process food. Um, there's two majors in this program. The major organized in Ghent is food science and technology, and the major um, uh, at Louvain is post harvest and food preservation technology and engineering. Just take into account all of the students, regardless of the major, start in Ghent, and then you move to different universities according to your study track. Um, the Masters in Pharmaceutical Engineering is an inter-faculty master, so it's organized at our faculty of bioscience engineering, of which my colleagues will talk a bit more uh, later on in the presentation but also at the Faculty of um, Health Sciences or of pharma, Pharmaceutical Sciences. Um, since populations are aging, diseases are becoming more prevalent. As you guys might also know, some viruses that are prevalent currently. Uh, so this master really looks at, OK, what kind of medicine can we create uh, to tackle these health issues? Um, and it really tries to be the pharmaceutical master of the future, looking at how to create high quality pharmaceutical projects. Um, this is a new um, master program. So if you want more information, the details are here on this website. Um, very interesting master, as I mentioned, collaboration between the pharmaceutical faculty and our faculty. And the final master I will talk about is aquaculture. So aquaculture is one of the fastest growing animal production sectors in the world. And it's one of the only ways that we can actually meet the demand of um, 
the demand for protein in the world. Um, so this master program really looks at, okay, how can we do aquaculture, but how can we also do it sustainably? Um, and it also, it doesn't have any different um, study tracks, but it really looks at both um, how to manage um, aquaculture while produ producing it, but also how to keep your fish healthy and how to make sure that you have uh, a high quality product at the end of the road. Um, for this program, there are also full scholarships available. Scholarships specifically for uh, VLIR UOS uh, countries. Now, what are VLIR UOS scholarships? Um, these are scholarships awarded by the Belgian Development Corporation. So there's a defined list of countries that you have to be from to be applicable for one of these scholarships. But basically, they are full scholarships um, that cover your tuition fee, as well as a monthly allowance, as well as travel costs to Belgium. So very interesting if you're from one of these countries. Uh, it's a select number of countries from Latin America, Africa and Asia. For more information on these countries, I would highly suggest you go to their website. Um, so that's it for the programs. The only program with a scholarship uh, offered here at Ghent University is the VLIR US program, uh, the aquaculture program, I mean, which has VLIR US scholarships. However, there are other scholarships available. There are top up grants, these are provided by Ghent University, but basically what happens is each program um, selects the top ranked student from that program and nominates them for the scholarship and then there's a panel who decides whether a, st a student from a certain program can receive that scholarship. Um, mastermind uh, scholarships are basically done in the same way. So the programs nominate a applicant and these are provided by the Flemish community. Beside those few scholarships offered by Ghent University, there are, there's always the option of getting a scholarship from a local agency in your country. An example is Colfuturo, of which uh, three students um, enrolled with a Colfuturo scholarship this year. Later on in the presentation, we will also talk about Erasmus Mundus scholarships, but those are only awarded um, in specific Erasmus Mundus programs, which are inter-university programs and which my colleague will talk about shortly. Um, but before we continue with the presentation, I would like to give the floor back to Lane, who has an, uh, an interesting um, interview, I think. Yes, thank you, uh, Jarre. So my name is Lene and um, I will introduce our first guest for tonight. Um, her name is Thais Gedjes Silveira and Thais is uh, currently in her second and so final uh, year of the Master in Environmental Science and Technology and she comes from Brazil. So welcome Thais. Hello, good evening. Thank you Lene for the introduction. Happy to be good here. Good evening. <laughs> Um, let me ask you first, so you travel a long end to Belgium. Um, what made you decide to, um, to study Imeste at Ghent University? Um, so during my bachelor in chemical engineering in Brazil, I had the opportunity to do an internship in the Netherlands actually, and it was very nice. I really liked the experience. I learned a lot. So when I went back to Brazil, I was really planning to search for a master's in Europe. And I wanted a course focused on environmental science. And I found this program at UGent and was exactly what I was looking for. So if I checked the curriculum, everything that I had interest on was present on it. And when I was in the Netherlands, I also had the chance to visit different cities in Belgium. And I, I really liked the country. So this combination really helped me to make this choice. OK, and uh, yeah. You're in your final year now. What are your opinions on the program so far? I really like it, especially uh, the way it's organized. So in the first year, it is quite broad indeed, but it's really nice because we learn about environmental legislation, pollution, climate change, but also how to prevent and remediate uh, this pollution, air, waste, um, soil. So uh, and, and also a really nice study in marine, uh, focusing marine. And in the second year, we can choose our major. So we can choose uh, the area that you more uh, have more interest on. 
in my case, resource recovery. And so far, I've been learning a lot of new technologies. And I think it's a very rich program. And the professors and international team are always very nice uh, with, uh, with everyone, very open for discussions and questions. And in my group of students, we are quite diverse. So it's also a good opportunity to get to know people from all over the world and exchange uh, different knowledges related to environment in this case. OK, and what is it what is it like for you to be a student in, in Ghent? And do you like the city, for example? I really like it. I think Ghent is a lovely city. Uh, it has a lot of very interesting museums, but also canals and you can do everything by bike. So it's very easy to get to know different parts of the city and also very lovely parks, especially in summer. It's nice for a picnic or just to go for a walk. And if you like traveling, as mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, you can easily take the train and visit different cities in the country and even go to the Netherlands or Germany. And there are also different uh, a variety of bars, clubs and restaurants that as a student you can also visit in the city center or in the student area. Although with the pandemic can be a bit limited, but hopefully by next year there will be more social activities. So it's a very nice city. Yeah, and um, going back a bit to the academic part, um, what do you hope to achieve with your master's degree after you graduate? Yeah, I hope that as soon as I graduate uh, that I would uh, be able to have absorbed as much as possible from all the knowledge that was passed to me during the, the course, the program, and that I'll be able to help uh, to solve environmental challenges that we're facing in the world in, in a good job, either in the academic or in the industry, envi industry area, uh, hopefully maybe here in Europe. And I also, uh, by that, trying to solve environmental issues and touch protect the environment not only for our generation but also for future generation so that's my goal <laughs> that's very nice uh maybe final question is there anything you'd like to add for the students present here and that might be interested in one of our programs i think uh yeah the the best tip is to really uh, go to the website and check the curriculum of the program that's what really helped me because uh, in the curriculum you can also have uh, the option to see the description of the courses so you can understand what you're really going to learn during the program and have an idea if that's what you are uh, seeking to study. And knowing that Ugent is also top 100 university, uh, you can be assured that's going to be a very quality program. And Ghent, uh, you can also find a lot of pictures and videos of Ghent, the city, and I think this can also be an inspiration and help you to motivate to apply for one of the courses at UGAN and hopefully by next year you can also be one of the UGAN's students. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, for your testimony and I wish you all the best thank with uh, the last part of your thank you. uh, master's program. And uh, then I give thank the floor much. to my colleague Jean who will uh, talk a little more about Ghent University. You're still muted, John. Thank you, Lane and, and Thais. And uh, indeed, I will uh, take some time to guide you around Ghent University and try to convince you of this char uh, university. Let me share my screen. Right, so Ghent University was established in 1817, that's over 200 years ago, and thereby the university is actually older than the country itself. That's uh, interesting to know in some quizzes. It's a top 100 university, top 150 for some other uh, rankings. And the university is uh, it has 11 faculties. It actually covers each research field possible, but the faculties are not on one campus, they are spread on in their other, the each other's uh, fac, uh, campus over the city, which makes it quite nice to have a nice blend between the student life and, and the city life, as Hilden has already pointed out. Now, is it a big university? Well, it depends on what you consider big. I would call it medium-sized. We have about 50,000 students, of which 30%, over 30% are international students. That's over uh, almost 7,000 international students. We are sending our students out abroad to give them an international experience, and we are welcoming 
uh, over months, over 6,000 students every year. That can be both for short uh, educational programs or for full diploma programs. Now, what are these students coming to do here? Well, studying obviously in one of our programs. We have an, a modest number of bachelor programs in English, only three out of the 50, but over half of our 150 master programs are in English and all of our master after master programs, all 10 of them are in English. And then of course, our PhD programs are traditionally all in English. And as you can see, the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering uh, to be represent here takes a large chunk of these international students. So what can you expect as a student in, in Ugent except for excellent education and research? Well, we treat our students as best as possible. Uh, we try to, to make them their stay here as comfortable and enjoyable and safe as possible and giving the services to, to find their proper housing, uh, student restaurants, sports center, etc. We also take care of the physical and, and mental health by offering student doctors and coaching, student psychologists, and university language centers. So we cover all the services to make your stay here as uh, interesting and as comfortable as possible. When related to health issues, obviously we still need to mention the, the elephant in the room, the corona situation, which most likely is fading out, but we cannot guarantee that. But we can assure you that under whatever circumstances, Ghent is doing every effort to make a, um, a safe stay here and to offer courses uh, on campus as much as possible and enable the uh, enable students to to get here safely and participate in the student life actually we, we can mention that this year we actually increased our number of students uh, notwithstanding the covid situation due to our efforts i think this is in a nutshell what uh, we'd like to mention about kent university and i give the floor back to hilde who will tell you a little bit more about our faculty Okay, so I'm back here, so I will uh, tell you a little bit more about the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering, one of the 11 faculties of Ghent University. You can see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, before I go on, I want to check now. Okay, so uh, I will also show you a couple of pictures. Here you see uh, a view from the air of uh, some of the buildings and the garden of our campus. So we have a, a rather small campus, which also makes it that you can feel at home quite quickly and maybe the first two days you will get lost, but after that you will find your way quite easily. So we have some uh, modern buildings. Here you see one example of a modern building, uh, the copper background or the, the copper big thing at the right uh, side of the screen. That's the outside of a big auditorium that you can see. And in front you can see a place where students can meet and talk uh, during the uh, during the breaks. So but we also have some older buildings. So here you can see in the front uh, the uh, oldest building on our campus. And we also have uh, at the back side of that building a very nice garden which is being used a lot by the students in spring and summertime. And not only the students, also staff uh, use it to have lunch. Of course, uh, we have a lot of laboratories uh, on our campuses and uh, state of the art laboratories. And here you can see one picture of them. And here you have another one of them. So for all the research, of course, this is uh, very uh, important. And then we also have a library. Here you can see some students uh, making use of the library. So also to study, it is very popular by the students uh, to make use of the library to go there. And it has been stressed already a couple of times so that bikes are very important. So here you can see it again that uh, a bicycle friendly environment. So this is for us quite uh, uh, important as well for the transportation in the city of Ghent. And it has been mentioned already as well by uh, the students that uh, Ghent is uh, a top ranked university. And here we have some of the numbers. So you have some numbers of Ghent University in different rankings, but also uh, the sub-disciplines in some of the rankings. 
where we as a, a faculty are active in. So for example, the Shanghai Academic Ranking, you can see uh, Ghent University is their place that's number 71. But when we have a look at the subdiscipline of agriculture sciences, then we are at number 13. So in both the first uh, position in Belgium there. Also Times Higher Education uh, ranking, Ghent University plays number 96. But when we look at life sciences, so what we also do, we are there uh, doing better and at place uh, 54. The same for National Taiwan University ranking, Ghent University plays 121, but for agriculture we are placed at 15 in the world. Uh, QS World University rankings, Ghent University number 141, but for agriculture and forestry we are at place number 11. So quite good numbers uh, we can say. Some more numbers that I want to share with you. Uh, the uh, staff, we have about 100 professors and 750 academics and administrative personnel and uh, about 3000 students. And for, from the students, you can see we have quite an important number of international students. So you will certainly not be the only international student on campus. About one out of three of our master students uh, come from abroad. Also from the PhD students, we have even a bigger number of international students there. So and when you see from the international students, the numbers of uh, this year, we have 106, 167 students who come for a short term mobility. This is mainly within the framework of an exchange program. And we have more than 300 students in a master degree program and we have uh, more than 460 students in a PhD program, international students, uh, I mean. So when we look at the uh, gender balance, uh, we see we have a quite good balance there. There are just a little bit more female students than male students, but overall I think we can say this is a quite good balance there. And when we look at the origin of our international students, you can see that uh, the biggest group of students, they come from Asia, followed by the students from uh, Africa, 26% and also quite a big group from Europe and followed then by the Latin American students and a small group of students from North America. So and to finalize uh, this part on the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering, uh, we have a slide about the research teams that uh, we can, uh, that we consider part of our faculty. And you can see that we have a circle there starting with the natural capital and sustainable primary production because originally our faculty was the faculty of agriculture this was the first name but in the years there have been other things added and you can see in the circle from sustainable primary production we also go to food and health and then we move also to bioeconomy and green chemistry and to end the circle clean environmental technology to go back to the natural capital. And also in the middle you can see all this is uh, supported by the biotechnology research and data analysis which is important for all the domains that you can see here. Okay, so this is the end of my part. So now I will give the floor back to my colleague Jean who will talk about the Erasmus Mundus programs. Thank you, Hilde, indeed, me again. Um, Jare has already explained you a bit about the master programs that we run, run full time at our faculty, and I will now go in a bit more detail about the Erasmus programs. Let me share my screen again. So first of, first of all, what are Erasmus programs? Well, Erasmus Mundus programs it's an European initiative. It's a kind of a quality label for programs that run over uh, two years or one year, but in our case they are all two years, and they are organized by a consortium of universities, of European universities. And this uh, has a, a couple of very specific characteristics. It delivers a joint diploma signed by the different partners, and what is most most important is that you will be able to travel, physically travel from one university to another during your study period. And last but not least, the program comes with comprehensive scholarships. We'll go into details at the end of my section here. 
Now, we at our faculty, well, just to give you an idea, in the whole of Europe, there are about 135 Erasmus Mundus programs. And at our faculty, we are running four. Number one, the, Master, the International Master of Science in Environmental Technology and Engineering. It's an environmental pollution is a complex and unfortunately it's a growing problem. And through the EMETA program, you will learn to develop, design and apply technologies for the prevention and remediation of environmental pollution. The partners in the programs are, are uh, except for ourselves, the coordinator is Delft, Netherlands and the University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague. For coming year, there are unfortunately no scholarships, but for the year after, we have again secured uh, funding and scholarships will be available. The program is coordinated by Delft. The second program is the, master, the International Master on Soils and Global Change. And that global changes affect our, our planet in many ways, we all know. And the effects on soils are considerable, but they are often underestimated. So what we need is experts who understand the interaction between the soil and global chains. So we are looking for creative and smart researchers that can develop strategies to heal and strengthen the, the resilience of soils, which is a crucial aspect in many aspects of our society, and not only agriculture. The partners in this program are ourselves as coordinator and Arus in Denmark, Göttingen in Germany, and Natural Resources and Life Science University in Vienna. There are two specializations in this program, one on soil biochemistry and global change, and one on physical land resources and global change. The third is the Health Management in Aquaculture program. And this program is building on what Jana has already described for our general masters in aquaculture. It's actually a kind of specialized program on the same field and it's also based on the on producing healthy and sustainable seafood and it will it will be necessary to farm this uh, these agriculture this aquatic seafood in a in a robust and a healthy way now unfortunately aquatic farming is a growing business but it's also unfortunately facing disease and health issues uh, this new program aims precisely at this. It will prepare you to develop innovative solutions and manage aquaculture health problems. And you will learn to understand and control the interactions between the farmed animal and the environment, and so produce robust and healthy animals with attention for the epidemiologi epidemiologic, environmental and welfare regulations. The consortium's partners are Norwegian University in Science and Technology in Trondheim, Norway, Wageningen University in the Netherlands, and the University Autonoma in Barcelona in Spain. There are three learning tracks in this program. The learning track, they all start in Ghent for one semester, and then you can choose between the ecosystems and health aspects in Norway, the disease prevention management in Netherlands, and physiology and health in Spain. The next program is the Sustainable and Innovative Natural Resource Management Program called CINERAM. And we all know there is not such a thing as waste. Waste is a resource and that is what CINERAM is all about. The program offers you a broad view on the entire value chain of natural resources with opportunities and limitations. You learn to develop different technological options for optimizing flows of natural resources in the different parts of this value chain. The consortium partners are Ghent, Uppsala in Sweden and Freiburg in Germany. And what's interesting in this program is that there is additional EAT, um, oh, sorry, that's the next slide. There are five majors in this mobility track, one on geo-resource exploration, one on sustainable processes, one on sustainable entrepreneurship, one on resource recovery and sustainable materials, and finally on circular societies. This program is an AET labeled program, which comes with additional scholarships that can be um, very interesting for European students that also can apply for a partial waiver of the program participation costs. 
The last Erasmus program that we are running at our faculty is the International Master of Science in Rural Development. And this is a multidisciplinary master program tackling problems in rural areas like feeding the world, addressing climate change, promoting a sustainable man management of natural resources and ensuring territorial resilience and cohesion. EMD has a number of different mobility options, each linked to mobility at different partner universities. In short, there is a main distinction between the program offering only the Master of Science in Rural Development and the program offering a double degree. The partners in this program are ourselves as coordinator, Agro Campus West in France, Humboldt in Germany, Slovak University in Slovakia, University of Pisa in Italy and the University of Cordoba in Spain, and there are nine more non-European partners. This program also can claim US scholarships. And it comes with five different, uh, with three different tracks, Atlantis, Ecafri and Irudev. This is may sound quite complex, but we invite you to visit the website for more details. A last word on the scholarships themselves. As mentioned, the scholarships are, um, are full-fledged, meaning that if they cover most of your expenses. That includes the tuition fee, the monthly allowance, which is quite comfortable, depending on your lifestyle, obviously. Travel costs up to 7,000 euro. Uh, for non-European students, an all-in insurance, and there is no ex additional administration application fee charged. So all in all, this is a this is a great opportunity, and we all invite you to look into the details and consider applying. And on applying, I pass the floor back to Yara, who will give more explanation on how to apply for our different programs. Thank you, Jean. Um, so I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, so now we've given you guys a bit of information about the different kind of programs, what the city is like, what the university is like, what the faculty is like. Um, now, how to apply. Um, so the first thing you need to do is check the program requirements. This is important because these are different for each program. In case you're not sure, you can always send us an email. Applications.itc at ugent.be. That's the one-stop shop for all of these programs if you have any questions about the application. Um, important to note is if you're in your last years of an undergraduate or a bachelor program, you can already apply for our programs, even if you haven't physically received your diploma yet. Uh, this is the case for all our programs, except for the Sustainable and Innovative Natural Resource Management Program and the International Masters in Soils and Global Change Program. For those programs, you already need to have your diploma before you can be admitted or uh, can receive a scholarship for these uh, programs. So, you need to check the requirements, the academic requirements, but important is also that you need to have a sufficient high level of English and you need to be able to prove this. So again, the English requirements differ for program, but generally speak, uh, speaking a TOEFL, IELTS or CEFR um, certificate of a certain level will give you uh, admittance to the program. Maybe important to restate, all of our programs are taught in English. So none of the programs are in French or Dutch, all of them are in English. When can you apply? Well, applications are already open. They were open since, since October. And there's two important deadlines that you have to remember. The most important deadline is the 28th of February. Uh, this is basically when we close the applications for all students who are trying to get an Erasmus Mundus scholarship, a Mastermind scholarship, or a Vlir UOS scholarship. Uh, after this date, we are not going to evaluate any new files, and we're going to uh, award, uh, use the students who have already ap applied to select them for a scholarship. 
So this is both for people inside the EU or outside of the EU. If you are applying um, and you want to get a scholarship, 28th of February. This is also the deadline for all non-EU applicants. Okay, so if you're from outside of the EU, this is the final deadline for you to apply to our program. If you are living in the EU or you are a European national, then the 31st of May is the final deadline for application. But take into account at that uh, point in time, you will not be considered for a scholarship anymore because they will already have been awarded. Uh, the scholarship results um, are usually available mid-April. Um, and again, if you have any questions about this procedure or when the deadlines are exactly or to which category, from non-EU or EU students, um, uh, then you can always ask a question in applications.itc at ugent.be. So that's practically to apply what you have to do. Again, later on, you'll have the link to our website or the websites of the programs where you can check all of this. So we've had a student uh, who who was here to to talk a bit about her, her study path, but it's also important for you guys to figure out, okay, what can you do after your studies? So there's four main categories where our students end up once they graduate. Um, a lot of them end up in research or education. Usually this is through a PhD program. So for, for all of our master programs, uh, they are research master programs, so they really prepare you for an academic career if that is what you are interested in. Um, another big group or, or sector where our students end up are um, NGOs, governmental uh, organizations, or even the private sector. And there they usually have more policy ma uh, making or a coordinating function. Uh, a good example is the Food and Agriculture Organization in, in Rome. A lot of our students end up there either through an internship or through uh, one of the programs that they studied. So those are governments, research, but a lot of our students also work as consultants. Both again, both again in the private sector, in governments, in NGO, so as more of an advisory position. And linked to that, a lot of them are also consultants in the private sector as, as freelancers. And that actually brings us to a lot of our students who, who do entrepreneurship. There's a few masters who are really focused on it. For example, the Sustainable and Innovative Natural Resource Management Master, but also others where they really teach you, okay, how can you start your own business? Um, and we also have many students who, who have ended up in this field, you know, trying to, to start their own business um, after they've graduated. So those are the four main fields that, that you can end up in after you graduate here uh, at Ghent University. Um, so before I give the floor back to Lynn for our final interview of the evening, um, I just want to remind you, if you have any questions, to post them in the chat. After the final interview, I will go over those questions and we will answer them. Um, but of course, it, using this method, you cannot ask live questions. So if you have a question, po post them in the chat and we will follow up on them and I will go over them uh, in a few minutes time. All right, Lynn. Uh, the floor is back to you. Thank you, Yara. So yes, our second and final guest for tonight is uh, Onindo Maji. Uh, Onindo studied the Master of Science in Sustainable Land Management or Physical Land Resources, as it used to be called when he graduated uh, in 2020. Currently, uh, on Onindo is working as a doctoral scholar on soil erosion at the University of Manchester in the UK. Welcome, uh, Onindo. Happy you could join us tonight. I think you're still muted. Um, thank you for having me. Good to be here. <laughs> um, let me ask you first. Um, like I um, asked to Thais as well, what made you decide uh, on an academic or, or personal or otherwise uh, le uh, level to study the Master in Physical Land Resources? Well, I must say it was an academic decision uh, dominantly because I 
well, the Physical Land Resources Program, which is now called Sustainable Land Management, has been a program that has been long running at Kent University almost for 50 years or so. And there have been soil scientists from India that have actually studied this program back in the back in the time, and they have actually gone back to India, been very famous soil scientists, written books, the books that I read when I was doing my bachelor's. And that kind of fueled my inspiration to apply for it because I was interested in soils and well, this is the place to be, Ghent University, uh, Campus QP, Faculty of Bioscience Engineering, if you really want to learn about soils and various aspects. So I must say it was like a purely academic decision on my part to come for it. And uh, what did you think of the program? Uh, also academically and socially, being it a program with uh, people from all over the world, of course. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great experience. I mean, the, the kind of outlook it gives you, the, the new perspectives, uh, not just academic, outside of academia as well, meeting people from around the world, not just within the program, but in the faculty and the university in general. I mean, in, in uh, talking about the academics, I can already say that, I mean, Ghent University is probably one of the few places in the world um, that do, that study soils, that have the soil research as they do. There is like all the soil labs that a soil scientist can imagine of and yeah, it really trains you to not just in the theory but also in the practical aspects of uh, soil science and how to link uh, soils to other environmental systems around it and it's really provide a, a very holistic education in my physical land resources program which is now called sustainable land management it's even more interdisciplinary so yeah it's just a best uh, one of the best programs in the world I guess. <laughs> That's nice. Um, what was it like for you to be uh, a student in, in Ghent? Well, it was brilliant. I can already say it. I mean, it was, it was a shame that it was tainted by COVID during the last uh, semester and I couldn't uh, live it fully as, as much as I'd like. But the first three semester, I must say, I mean, it exceeded all my expectations. I mean, I was coming from yeah, half around the world and in a totally different culture, in a totally different continent. and. Well, fears and, and apprehensions are quite natural when you are making that kind of a jump uh, from a totally different environment, social, environmental, everything. But I must say, I mean, I didn't have any problems or any fears, anything like I was just made to feel at home. I mean, Ghent is such a beautiful city and it's so welcoming. It's not a big city as we have the slide was shown, but it's a very well knit and it's a very cl uh, close, um, well knit together city that welcomes you with open arms and the city is the university. They are one and the same thing and it's just an extension of the great city. Ghent University is just a great university with great people around. So. I mean, yeah, it's only it's only thumbs up for me. I, I wish I could have done my PhD there, but yeah, that's COVID. Thank you for your enthusiasm. It's, it's great to see. Um, maybe we can look at your career path so far. Uh, well, it started only a year ago, but can you tell us a bit more about your position and, and especially in what way your master diploma was a factor in obtaining it? Well, absolutely it was. I mean, I can I can guarantee that. I mean, I graduated last year, of course, but due to COVID, everything was closed. So I couldn't start my PhD last year and I had to apply for this year. And what really counted, I guess, uh, what really you know made my application stronger was that uh, I did a very good research master's thesis while at UGent and I already published a paper on a part of it before I applied for this PhD program. And that was not just my effort, but our constant encouragement of my master's thesis supervisor at UGEN, Professor Jan Nissen and, and Professor Anwar uh, which is uh, who is in the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering. And that really counted on my part, apart from the study results, which was which was nice, which was great. And, and the Physical Land Resources degree is a very well-known degree. With, with It's an inter-university degree with VUB. Uh, apart from that, also the scores, the, the research, the, the research article that I published uh, on my thesis, really you know i think it made the difference on my part because i can say that i am the only scholarship holder uh, only international scholarship holder in my department so i can i can estimate that many people applied for this manchester is a big university as well but i only got selected which speaks volumes as to like my previous education and and get university's influence in that so yeah mm -hmm. um Maybe uh, for you also a final question. Um, is there anything you would like to add for the audience that is present today? Well, yeah, I can, what I can really add is uh, when I applied for Ghent and when I was like kind of make, trying to make a decision, I had also funded offers from elsewhere, uh, universities in Europe, uh, other universities. And I really, you know, just 
you know, it was a judgment call. It was academic, but it was also like some sort of yeah, just choice. Um, but I was so happy after I reached Belgium that all my preconceived notions, all my fears, apprehensions were just dissolved, thrown out the window on the very first day that I met uh, <laughs> professors. And it kept on happening for the next two years. And I was like, yeah, it was just a confirmation that I made the right decision. So if people are having some sort of two minds and people want to study the sort of things that ITC offers through its master's programs, and they may be offered elsewhere as well. If you are having this dubiousness, if you're having this conundrum confusion, what I can really say that, yeah, go for it, I, I guess. I mean, you probably won't find a better place than Ghent as a city and Ghent University as a university to study at. I mean, I am I am also in a big university now. I'm a PhD student and people say, OK, you're from Ghent University. You must be very proud. And this has happened to me a couple of times after coming to Manchester. People say, people just approach me, oh, you're from Ghent University. Well, that's a great university. You must be very proud. And I say, yeah, I am. <laughs> it's just a great place and a great, great university. So, yeah, I would say, just go for it and, and you won't you won't regret. Well, thank you so much for your uh, great testimony. Um, and let me let let me uh, end with uh, wishing you all the best. With, thank you. Uh, continuing your PhD. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's move back to Yarena for the Q&A. Hey, Lynn. Uh, yeah, thanks again for that great interview. It kind of makes me want to study all over again here in Ghent. Um, so I'll go through some of the questions that you guys uh, published um, and try to answer them. Again, if you have any questions, just post them in the chat. If I can't answer them, I'll ask for one of my colleagues to pop in and answer it. Um, so the questions um okay is it allowed to apply for the master of science in electrical engineering um that's not one of the masters that we offer um but please let us know which program you are um interested in ah there's a question about uh, tuition fees um so the Tuition fees differ per program, but in general, there's two broad um, categories of tuition fees. For the programs organized in Ghent, tuition fees are around uh, 5,000 euros uh, per academic year. So those are the programs that are organized only in Belgium. When you look at the programs organized uh, with different universities, so our Erasmus Mundus programs, there the tuition fee for non-European students is 9,000 euros per year. Uh, the only program that differs from that is the Masters in Sustainable and Innovative Natural Resource Management. For European students, the tuition fee for these Erasmus Mundus programs is 4,500 euros per year. But the specific tuition fees for programs, uh, I would highly suggest you check on the program website themselves, because as I mentioned, they differ between the programs, but that's a rough estimate of what a uh, annual tuition will cost. Um, a question from someone who is from Ghana, uh, where they speak English as an official language and whether they still need a TOEFL test. Yes, for most of our programs, Regardless of whether you are a native speaker or not, you will still need to prove it with an English certificate. Uh, there are some exemptions per program, but again, check the language requirements. But in general, uh, if you're a native speaker, you will still need to prove your English proficiency. OK, uh, Emily asks an interesting question. Is it possible to go on Erasmus with the non Erasmus Mundus programs? So. For those of you who are not familiar with the Erasmus, um, in Europe, there is a possibility for students to go on an exchange, and this is called an Erasmus exchange. So this is basically where you, you spend one semester at a, another university and follow courses there that are similar to the courses that you learn or that you follow at your home university. So for the programs organized, in Belgium, so we're talking about nutrition and rural development, aquaculture, um, sustainable land management. For those programs, you can actually 
um, apply to go abroad during a semester. However, it will depend on the program and uh, the professor wh whether that will be allowed. Usually, most people don't do that. So they usually don't go on Erasmus um, within one of our programs, um, but it is possible in certain cases. Um, for the Erasmus Mundus programs, this is not possible because mobility is inherent in the program. Um, okay, so a question from uh, Yutaro, uh, when she can know the results of the application itself. So not the scholarship selection, but the application. So as soon as you start your application and you submit your application file, our application team will review it. So this may takes any time between one and three or maybe four weeks. Uh, for our team to review your file, and then you will receive an answer on whether the application uh, was accepted academically or not. Sometimes you will still need to upload or add uh, certain documents. For example, uh, you might need to upload a language certificate, or you might need to um, send some additional documents to prove a certain course that you took. But in general, between one week and maximum one month, you will have the result of your um, application. So not of the scholarship selection, that's a, at a later date, but for your application between a week and a month. Um, okay, a question. If I can't have my final year GPA of my bachelor's degree by the deadline, can I still apply for the master's program or the scholarship? So as I mentioned before, even if you haven't officially graduated yet, so if you're still in your last year, at the moment, you can apply for our programs. The only exceptions are the two Erasmus Mundus programs, Sustainable and Innovative Natural Resource Management and Soils and Global Change. For those, uh, you need a diploma or your final bachelor diploma, you need it to already have obtained it before you can apply for a scholarship. But for all the other ones, you can already apply and you will also be taking account for your scholarship. What we do there is we look at the GPA of the first two years of your bachelor. Okay, another question concerning uh, COVID. So um, due to the COVID pandemic, I've been in lockdown for months and the date of my ALS test is in, uh, it, it was delayed. If I missed the deadline of the scholarship because I used my B2 certificate from my university. In this case, it's, he, he or she is talking about the University of Kanto in Vietnam. Um, again, this requirement will differ for program. So in general, even if you do not have your English certificate yet, you can already submit an application. Based on that application, we can let you know whether you are admitted academically. However, most of the time to be selected for a scholarship or to obtain your letter of admission, you will have to submit your um, IELTS test result. Um, of course, this test result in, in those cases, like for example, uh, this applicant who due to the COVID situation um, can't have their test on time, it is possible to send your test results after the deadline of um, uh, submission. So the 20th of February is the deadline of application. It is possible to submit your language test after that deadline. However, we must uh, be frank, in most cases, if your language certificate is uh, submitted after we've already done the selection of the scholarships, you will most likely not be selected for a scholarship, but you can still be admitted if we receive your language uh, before the end of um, uh, June. So, so there is some leeway to um, submit your language certificate later. Um, however, we would urge you to try and get it before the initial deadline so that you can be taken into account for scholarship as well. Um, another question.
OK. Um, ah, here's a good question from Gavin. Would having work experience boost the chances of attaining the Erasmus Mundus scholarship? So uh, it's an interesting question. Again, that kind of depends on the program. Uh, for example, for the scholarships offered by Vlir UOS, so by the Belgium Development Corporation, their work experience is actually a real positive um, um, asset. It really helps you with the, with the application. For the Erasmus Mundus scholarship, not necessarily. You do not need work experience to obtain um, an Erasmus Mundus scholarship, but it does if, if the work experience is relevant, it does increase uh, the quality of your application. If, for example, you're applying for agriculture health uh, management and you have experience working in a lab um, uh, uh, or working in a fisheries industry, it really does uh, augment the quality of your um, of your file. So uh, if you have work experience, I would highly suggest that you mention it, uh, but it's not necessary. Even if you're just coming straight out of your bachelor's, can still be um, uh, you can still receive a scholarship. Okay. All right, there's another question, and I think maybe this one uh, is for Thais. Uh, is the scope of the different year two modules of the environmental science and technology fixed, or is there uh, an option to bring in topies, uh, topics of particular interest, such as integration of aviation and urban air mobility? So Thais, um, could you maybe answer this question? So specifically, whether the the modules for the second year of your master program, whether they are fixed or not, or whether you can you can actually bring in your own uh, subjects. Well, we had the yeah, we could actually choose some of the some of courses, some courses, uh, but in this case it was because uh, we should we could have done also an internship. So for those that didn't do an internship, they could use those credits as electives. Uh, but then uh, I'm not sure about these ones that uh, the, the person mentioned because we had to choose among some options. So we could choose, for example, electives from the other majors. But I'm not sure uh, about these ones that he mentioned. I think it has to be uh, somehow related to the course. So it's not exactly free. Uh, you cannot choose. I don't think you can choose from other programs. I think it has to be from one of the majors. All right, thank you for that answer, Thais. Paul, I hope uh, that answered your question. Um, all right, the next question uh, again from Paul, whether when tuition fees are paid. So that's, uh, that's maybe also important to know. So there is no application fee. So application is it's free of charge. Anyone can submit an application. Once you've received your letter of admission, um, around mid-August, you will receive your tuition fee invoice. And basically, you need to pay the tuition of that year before you can be enrolled for that year. So for example, all our academic years start in September, uh, usually the last uh, Monday of September. And if you wish to be enrolled in uh, 2022, so next year, you need to pay your tuition fee before the start of the academic year. Um, and that's only for one year, and then the year the, for the second year, you need to pay tuition again. So the tuition is paid twice, once for the first year and once for the second year. Um, all right, Angela. Um, I'm applying for another Erasmus Mundus program that asks me to notify if I am applying for another Erasmus Mundus program. Do you know why this is? If I can apply to two programs, it decreases my chance of being accepted to one of these programs, question uh, mark. So basically her question is, okay, is it allowed to apply for mul to multiple Erasmus Mundus programs? Um, yes, it is allowed to apply to multiple Erasmus Mundus programs. 
Um, probably what this program is asking is whether you have been admitted to an Erasmus Mundus program in the past. So you can apply for multiple Erasmus Mundus programs, but you can only be admitted and you can only receive an Erasmus Mundus scholarship once. So take that into account. Um, if you are selected in two programs, we've we've had cases like this even within our, our own programs, you will only be able to accept the scholarship of one of these programs. And once you complete that program, you can no longer apply for another Erasmus Mundus. Ah, yeah. As Aaron mentioned, you can only apply, apply for a maximum of three Erasmus Mundus programs at the same time. So a maximum of three Erasmus Mundus programs at the same time. Um, but as Aaron also mentioned, uh, applying for multiple programs does not necessarily decrease your chances to be selected. Just make sure that you approach each application um, in a focused way and that you have, for example, your um, um, motivation letter written specifically for that program. Don't use a general motivation letter for all the different programs because then your chances will decrease as the evaluators will, will see that you're not focused on the um, uh, content or the subject at hand. Um, Okay, maybe the last question, whether the Bachelor of Veterinary Science uh, meets the IM IMRD eligibility re requirements. Um, yeah, this depends on your transcript of records. So for the Rural Development Masters, you need um, sufficient statistics and mathematics, and usually in veterinary science, you have some statistics. You need a background in life sciences, which you meet with a ver veterinary science degree, but you also need or economics or uh, sociology in your, your prior program. So that is where we needed to check your, um, um, your transcript of records to check whether you meet that final requirement. And uh, the best way to do this is just to submit your application. You don't lose anything by submitting an application and then we can check your transcript of records and we can let you know whether you are admissible or not. Okay, a uh, question from Gavin. How often is the Erasmus Mundus scholarship awarded? Um, so Gavin, again, depends on the program, but usually every year we award between 15 and 25 Erasmus Mundus scholarships for a certain program. But you have to, of course, take into account that we have multiple hundreds of applicants for those yeah, 15 to 25 scholarships. Um, so only the, the top applicants are selected and we look at a variety of factors being your GPA, but also your motivation, your prior education. Um, yeah, so yeah, only a, a, a small percentage of the total amount receive an Erasmus Mundus scholarship. Okay, I don't see any immediate new questions. Um, so I think that's it for the Q&A. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. And if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to send a, an email to us at applications.itc at ugent.be. I think all that information will also be uh, communicated to you afterwards. Um, now for the closing remarks, Wim. Yes, thank you, Yara. Um, so now uh, we have come to the end of our webinar. So um, I would like to thank you. And of course, I hope that we have met your expectations uh, tonight, that we have uh, provided you with all the information that you need to start your application to come to Ghent University next year. We will be very glad to meet you next year in August or September to um, see you in real life at our university. Um, of course, I would like to thank my team uh, and especially Lynn for organizing this webinar 
And of course, special thanks to uh, Nindia and Thais to join us this evening for their uh, wonderful uh, testimonials. Um, and as Yara said, please um, don't hesitate to contact us. We stay at your uh, service. Uh, the next few months um, during your application, if you have any questions, um, go to our website uh, where you can find a lot of information. If you can't find your information or you want some, some specific information for your specific situation, send us an email. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page with a lot of interesting um, information. So contact us and we are there to guide you uh, through the um, whole process of, of application and admission. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good evening from Belgium. It's evening here right now. So thank you and uh, we hope to see you again in September. Bye.